Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module two, lesson two. I'm gonna start off with the I can objective. It says, I can find the quotient of numbers up to four digits divided by two digit divisors using visual models. The learning objective here is that model division of whole numbers by two digit divisors using an area model. The prior learning last year, students supported and explained division with equations, regular arrays, and area models. Students used place value properties of operations and the relationship between multiplication and division to find whole number quotients and remainders with up to four digit dividends and one digit divisors. Now, jumping into the lesson, the spark your learning. It says, you are a game designer designing a treasure hunt game similar to the one shown. The game board is a grid with a treasure chest located behind one of the squares. The rectangular grid will have 96 squares. If the length of the grid is greater than 10 squares, how wide can the grid be? So the total area needs to be 96, but one of the sides, the length, needs to be longer than 10. So I know if it has to be larger than 10, my next guess would be 11. Is there anything times 11 that would equal 96? No. But what about 12? Yes. 96 divided by 12 is 8. So that can work. If you're following the teacher edition, it does have 16, and then the length is going to be 6, which is totally fine. You can go with that. But for this, I know that the students know their multiplication facts up to 12, so I'm going to go with that one. All right, so I'm going to count 12 across and then 6 down and create my grid. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then six, I'm sorry, eight down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here is my 12 by eight grid. All right, so now into the build your learning question number one, it says you are designing another game in which the player needs to arrange flower pots in 12 equal sized groups. There are 156 flower pots. How many flower pots are in each group? All right, so I'm gonna go back through, circle my numbers. <clears throat> so I have 12 and 156. <clears throat> and the question says, how many flower pots are in each group? So I have 156 flower pots total, and they're being split into 12 equal sized groups. Instead of having you pause here and do the entire thing, I'm just gonna have you do a couple at a time because I know this problem is pretty in depth. So what I'm gonna have you do is just do question A for right now. It says, what multiplication and division equations can you write to model the number of flower pots P? So in that number that you don't know, put a P. You're writing both a multiplication and a division equation. Go ahead and do that now. All right, hopefully you got both of those equations. The multiplication is what we're gonna start with. So it's gonna be 12 times P equals 156. And the division that we're gonna get, we're starting with the 156, we're gonna be dividing it by 12 to find our total amount of pots that represents P. <laughs> so B says, how can you break apart 156 into a sum of multiples of 12? Use your multiples to make an area model. So we're gonna be using that grid over to the right. <clears throat> and then C says, what do the number of rows and the number of columns in the area model represent? So what I want you to do is figure out how many groups of 12 you can make from 156, and then tell me what your rows and your columns represent. So I want you to do B and C. Attempt those now. Go ahead. All right. So in B, 
It's, there are multiple different ways to do this. The way that I, my brain personally works is to get the biggest chunk out of the way. So I know that the biggest multiplication problem I have memorized is 12 times 12 is 144. All right. So let me write that down. 12 times 12 is 144. And I know that if I'm going to 156, all I have left is 12. So then I would just need one more. So 12 times one is 12. All right. So that would be 12 and one. That would be 13 groups. All right. And so if you're using your area model over to the right, I'm just going to go ahead and use different colors. I'm going to do blue as my first one. So the 12 times 12. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then by that group of 12 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so let me go ahead and trace this out, this 12 by 12 that I showed in my multiplication problem. And if I go to green, I just have that one. So it's gonna be this one by 12 here. All right, so this is one and then this is 12. All right. So then it says, what do the number of rows and the number of columns in the area model represent? This can be tri tricky. So the rows go this way. So I have 12 rows. That's the number of groups that it gave us in the problem. So 12 equal size groups. That's why we did 12 rows. Now the columns are going up and down and you see I have 12 and then I have one more. So I have 13 columns. That's the number of pots in each group. That's your 13 pots in each group. That would be your P that we did from um, letter A. Okay, so go ahead and write that in your own wording and see. For D, E, and F, I'm going to have this all be one group as well. For D, it says, how is the dividend represented in the area model? And for this, you do have to know the um, vocab for dividend. And then E is, how is the quotient represented in the area model? And then what is the quotient? So that's two questions. And then that second question is going to match the same answer for F, is how many flower pots are in each group? So go ahead and try D, E, and F now. All right, so for dividend, that is the total sum, right? So how is the dividend represented in the area model? That would be the total or the sum of the squares. So again, I want you to be writing complete sentences as you are practicing, but for right now, just to give you um, uh, where I'm going, I'm just gonna write total sum. For E, what is the quotient represented in the area model? The quotient is the columns. All right, and then what is the quotient? That's the 13. The amount of columns is 13. And then for F, how many flower pots are in each group? We do know that if there's 12 equal groups, we are gonna have 13 flower pots. And again, all of these questions should be answered in complete sentences. All right, that's it for today. I want you to go ahead and finish the rest of this lesson, and then I will see you for module two, lesson three.